We have some news out of Melbourne for you. Essendon captain Joe Watson is expected to hold a press conference in the next hour. It comes after the AFL's anti-doping tribunal cleared all 34 Essendon players who were being investigated over their involvement in the club's controversial supplements program. And we will bring you that press conference live just as soon as it gets underway. All right, we'll also have the weather for you shortly, but first let's head into the chat room. And today I'm joined by Nine's Lisa Fernandez in Perth. And hi, Emilia. Hi, hi, Alan. Alan Rascal. Hi, guys. Hello. Good day, guys. Well, first today, the Jackie Lambie Network. Sounds a bit like a television station, but it is actually <laughs> the name of the independent senator's new political party. Uh, formerly a member of the Palmer United Party, we know that Jackie Lambie's political career hasn't been without controversy. Uh, and after dramatically quitting PUP late last year, she has applied to the Australian Electoral Commission to register her own party to highlight Tasmanian issues. Now, she just needs party members, so she's turned to Facebook, where she's looking for Facebook friends to join her. An innovative way to form a new party. Alan? Well, it is very innovative and uh, it'll certainly be prove who are her real friends and who aren't when it comes to Facebook. I think she wants or has two million followers. It'll be interesting to see how many actually do vote for her. But I think the big story here is the name of that party, the Jackie Lambie Network. It does sound like a tele-evangelist station. I mean, we've got Jackie Lambie, Tammy Faye Baker, I'd certainly be watching it. But uh, on a serious note, you know, ordinary people do get voted into power very often because the uh, Australian voters are sick of the polished politicians that we seem to have. But more often than not, sadly, these ordinary Australians who do get into power, once they get there, they're treated like a bit of a joke and sadly do become a bit of a joke themselves. So I think the big loser here could off ultimately be we, the Australian voting public. All right. Lisa, your thoughts? OK, Amelia, by the way, lovely top. Thank I like you. what we've done today. <laughs> uh, look, for starters, I've got some tips for Jackie Lambie, OK? Uh, Facebook. Don't just post pictures of yourself with food. People don't like that. Yep. You won't get very many likes, OK? Uh, <laughs> what she needs to do is find some maybe some cute babies and do uh, some playground <laughs> stuff with them. She'll get more likes. I think she's actually been quite smart because, you know, Facebook, it's how we all communicate and it's how, uh, you know, word spreads and also she needs to go viral. Now, see, what I did was I dropped someone's iPhone once on Channel 9, uh, the brand new iPhone 6, and that went viral. Perfect. And it went viral on Facebook. So maybe she could do something like that um, and I believe she would get elected. Yeah, that is a great tip. And uh, thanks going, very much. <laughs> you are you are saying going viral, not vile. Yes. <laughs> no, that, no, <laughs> no. She can go viral. Right. Some great tips there. <laughs> we'll stand by some for some um, interesting status updates from Jackie Lambie, no doubt. All right. Next up, a story that's caused a huge amount of controversy today. The mother who was kicked off a Virgin flight from the Gold Coast after she refused to stop breastfeeding her baby. Now. The mum was feeding her 10-month-old son as the plane taxied out to take off uh, and using one of those slings to cover up for privacy. She says the cabin crew demanded that she remove that and, and became quite aggressive, uh, eventually forcing her off the plane where she was met by police. Witnesses have backed up her version of events. They say both the mum and bub were in their seats wearing their seatbelts. She hasn't been charged and Virgin has denied those allegations of discrimination, saying that safety comes first. Uh, Lisa, you can't help but feel for this woman. I know oh. when I went on my first flight with my yep. baby, my doctor told me you've got to start breastfeeding as soon as you head towards takeoff. So it's actually a recommendation. Absolutely, Amelia. And any, but well look, Amelia, any mum who's flown knows, right? Uh, babies can be very agitated on planes. They do need to be settled down. And I, I want to know what sort of a risk was she, or what sort of a risk was her sling? Yeah. The only risk I could think of for the sling was that she might want to have to have strangled the Virgin Australia <laughs> hostie, whoever that was. I'm really angry because I've actually been on a plane in the same situation, bottle feeding my baby, and they've said no, the baby has to be in the seat. Now, Isabella at the time was out of control. I can assure yeah. you, it would be much easier for her to stay on my lap during takeoff, right? Um, then have to put her down and have her wiggle around the seat, maybe fall on the floor. So they're just not taking into account the practicalities of having a baby and not even understanding what what hazard was the sling. Yeah, and you know what? It's hard enough sitting in one of those teeny tiny little seats oh, logistically try to, to try yes. and breastfeed. I can tell you, with everyone you know sitting right next to you having a having a look in, yeah. it's traumatic and enough. And you know what else? When your baby is screaming down the plane, oh. let's be honest, everyone else on the plane wants you to shut yeah, the baby up. You can you. do that by breastfeeding. They hate you. Exactly. Everyone hates you. Oh, so I'm, I'm angry at Virgin. I think they're a disgrace. Yeah, Alan, what do you reckon? Poor form? 
Well, I think it's poor form, virgin on the ridiculous, really, isn't it? Mm. But uh, you know, no one would argue when it comes to airline travel that you know safety is paramount. Yeah. Virgin says there was a safety issue, but the problem for Virgin is it hasn't revealed how it is a safety issue, and that's an ongoing right. problem. And the fact that uh, the airline has offered a, a flight in credit for this woman might be an indication that the airline itself thinks it may have gone a little bit too far. And if it did, it should apologise to the woman, fess up and pay for accommodation, taxis and all other out-of-pocket expenses. Yeah, I wonder if it has sort of raised awareness of, of the issue. I mean, breastfeeding is allowed on Virgin flights, the airline, airline has come out and said, and other airlines as well. Um, but maybe there needs to be some more clarity around, you know, the procedure if, if that was really an issue. And do you know what else, Amelia? I'll tell you what's a safety issue. The guy sitting next to me piling up with bourbons as we're about to take off. Yeah. And, and, and stockpiling them for the, for the flight, you know, a really long flight. That's there a safety issue. Things... That guy would usually be me. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, Alan. Sorry. <laughs> Awkward. There are worse things than a breastfeeding cover. I think we can all That's agree exactly to that. exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, next up, how is this for a lesson in respect? I love this story. An American woman dropped her daughters at the cinema only to learn later that the girls had been really rude and obnoxious to her mother during the movie. Uh, their brother <coughs> dobbed them in, by the way. Uh, ashamed by her daughter's behaviour, the mum put a call out on Facebook to find the woman that they defended. Uh, in it, she wrote, I can assure you the girls are being strongly dealt with and appropriately punished. This rude, disrespectful, awful behaviour is unacceptable. They owe you an apology. She said, my husband and I are having them write your apology letter tonight and we would like to pay for your next movie and snacks out of their allowance. Now, this was reposted thousands and thousands of times until the woman in question actually responded and, and they all made amends. Uh, Alan, it's, it's really a lesson those girls won't forget, isn't it? Absolutely, and what a great lesson it is to... Um, I mean, all kids muck up from time to time, but it's great they've been held to account and, and taken to task for their actions. As you say, the golden part about this story is the fact that they've been made to apologise and have to pay for uh, movie tickets for those they disrupted out of their own pocket money. So there's a good lesson learnt there, and I reckon in this self-obsessed me world, mm. there should be a bit more of this type of uh, tough punishment handed out because nowadays kids don't even like the word no. Yeah, it's, uh, it's some... Tough disciplining, but good, I reckon. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah. Uh, I applaud you, Kaisha. I applaud you uh, <laughs> for your name and also for your parenting. <laughs> Look, uh, kids these days can't do anything wrong, but they can't do anything wrong according to their parents. There she is. She's amazing. Can't mm. do anything wrong according to their parents. Now, what it is, if you if you, your kid um, falls over in the playground, you'll immediately, what, blame the other kid? Well, it's probably your kid's fault, or they were both in it together. You know, I, I think parents have a lot to answer for when it comes to parenting. They're just too protective, they're too possessive, and uh, I think she's absolutely fantastic because her kids are not going to forget that lesson. Because you can't be, you know, disruptive in a cinema. What would most parents have said? In that situation, most parents would have said, oh, was that lady rude to you? Yeah. Or, oh, what, what did that lady do to make you rude? What I love as well was the use of Facebook. She posted mm -hmm. this. The sheriff's yep. department, the local sheriff's department, then picked it up, shared it on their page. It was reposted and reposted, basically tracked this woman down. So this whole sort of uh, Facebook shaming process, yes. if you like. And yep. eventually, it's amazing, really, that this woman has, um, has seen it and popped up and they've been in contact since. So... It's a very positive end to the story, I think. Her kids, her kids will be better off for that kind of discipline because yeah. we're all too soft on our kids, I think. And how about the big brother dobbing them in as well? Yeah. Good on <laughs> him. How's, how's about the big brother having to go and watch Cinderella with his two yeah. sisters? Awesome. This was his and revenge. No one who dobbed him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, finally today, are these the most beautiful people on Earth? Not us, these next people we're about to show you. British researchers have used computer science to create... That's not them either, actually. The perfect male and female faces. <laughs> and we're about to show them to you. The study was commissioned by Samsung and led by a facial expert. The ideal female featuring brown eyes and hair, big eyes and high cheekbones, while the perfect male has blue eyes, brown hair and a square jaw. And apparently they look pretty much like these guys. Um, what do you think? I mean, we've been asking on Facebook for our viewers' thoughts and Mega's written... There they are. These are the two people we're talking about, finally. This is our woman and our man. These are who British scientists think are the most attractive, perfect faces. Megan's written, isn't beauty in the eye of the beholder. My hubby is the most beautiful person to me. Oh, and Loretta said, Angelina Jolie looks pretty close to perfect. 
Uh, Lisa, I'll come to you first. What do you think? Are these perfect faces? So who's your pick? Yeah, Amelia, I don't know if that's wise to come to me first, but I will give my <laughs> opinion now that I'm on chat room. Look, I think it's ridiculous. They're too perfect mm. and, quite frankly, do absolutely nothing for me, OK? My perfect face, because you, you did ask me to send it in to mm. you, which I did, yep. is um, Carl Drago from oh, Game of Thrones, yes. who is a mad hottie. Now, yep. why do I like him? Because he's got weird eyebrows. He's a little bit different. <laughs> he's yep. a little bit... Um, well, he's basically hot. Yeah, he's gorgeous. But, but he is gorgeous, but he's different, isn't he? He's mm. not your normal kind of necessarily the chiselled features. Um, he's got slightly weird, dangerous eyes, but mm. I'm not even going to start because he's just so gorgeous. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I mean, we all don't want to be clones of each other. Yeah. Those people look like brother and sister they're almost, too, don't they? They're too symmetrical, I think. They're oh. too perfect. I mean, they are computer generated and they look at... Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you mine because mine obviously trumps everyone's. Oh, I can't wait to say this, everyone's. Yeah. This here is uh, Captain Von Trapp. It's actually Christopher Plummer, <gasps> the actor. Brilliant. Now, this may have been taken 50 years ago, but he still is, you know, it's the most handsome face probably most of us have ever seen. Mm -hmm. To all the women at home watching, you're welcome. Um, yes. That's my classic <laughs> sort of perfect male face. Alan, I'm interested though for you, what, what was your, your pick for the perfect female? Well, look, as, as Megan said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but as every husband would say, the most beautiful person in the world, of course, is their wives. I did Aww. send in a picture. I don't know if it's there. It's the lovely oh. Martine. There she is, the lovely oh. Martine. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, look at that. She's, she's, just po she's just popping down the shops to buy oh. some milk. Oh, look at her. Yeah. Hang on a minute, Alan. If I knew you were going that angle, I would have sent in a picture of my boss here at Channel 9. <laughs> oh. Oh. I didn't yeah. oh. Well, he's got a perfect face. I feel really? A, yeah, I feel a little bit. <laughs> I feel a bit shallow yeah. now after my don't, Captain Von Trapp. Don't you? A really hot totally. moment. Um, Alan, you're just a but lovely I, but person. I, 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 but I'm, uh, I'm also a bit old school too. I mean, who can go past the beautiful Linda Evans from uh, '80s Super Soap Dynasty and her, her colleague jo, uh, Joan Collins? And what about Sophia Loren? Yeah. And I'm not too big as a bloke to admit that blokes do still admire good looks in other men. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Daniel Craig from mm. James Bond? So you also oh, found you yes. also found Captain Von Trapp attractive? Is that? So oh, he's a very saying? handsome man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm glad we established that. Guys, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll chat to you next time. Thanks, Amelia. See you, Alan.